Hi there, my name is Trolls and welcome to SoundPaint. In the video today, I want to show you how our new user sample import function works. This is an application that comes with SoundPaint, so not only do you get the free SoundPaint engine, but you now also get an editor so you can import your own samples into SoundPaint. This marks the third free application for SoundPaint. As you may know, you have the core engine, we have a new downloader, which also allows us to update programs and update samples for existing libraries. And now you have the editor as well. In this video here, I just want to get you inside of the editor, show you how it works. It's super, super simple. It's an ultra minimalistic environment, just like the rest of SoundPaint, truly designed to shorten the distance from your thought to your creation. So it's literally just dragging in your samples into the editor, generate a part and have fun with inside of SoundPaint. So let me show you how it works. When you install the latest version of SoundPaint, all three applications comes for free, including the editor. And there are two ways of accessing the editor, either by clicking the program icon down here after you've installed it, or as I prefer, simply just trigger it from within the SoundPaint engine. Just go up here, click the hamburger icon and click the user sample import here. This is going to open the editor. Our user sample import editor, or USI as we like to call it, is an ultra minimalistic editor, which quickly lets you take your favorite samples and import them into SoundPaint. Here's how you do it. The first thing you wanna do is to ensure that your audio card and MIDI keyboard are properly set up. You don't have to do this, but I find it easier when MIDI functionality is set up for the editor so I can play around with the sounds. So just go into audio and MIDI settings here and set up your audio card and your MIDI keyboard. And essentially all you gotta do now is just to find your samples drag them into the editor here, or go up to files and click import sample files from the directory as well. I prefer to just drag and drop. It's such a clean and fast way of doing it. But before we do that, there's a couple of things that's good to know. First of all, USI support all major sound formats, including MP3, AIF, WAV files, M4As, FLAC, AUG, and others. The only thing you gotta ensure is that you're either in 16 or 24 bit and always at 48 kilohertz. I personally like to use WAV files, so I use WAV files at 2448. Now, as I mentioned, there's two ways you can import the samples. You can either drag them to the grid or you can use the sample import function from the files here. But if you look here carefully, you'll see that there's a note value. It says ambient C1, ambient C2. You don't have to do that. You don't have to name your files in any specific way. But if you put these numbers here, they'll actually automatically put themselves on that corresponding note here on the grid. I kind of like doing that for anything that has tonal elements to it. So if you're doing multi-sampling of synthesizers or instruments, it's a really quick way to get the editor to place the samples on the right note value here. And now that we have the files in here, you can essentially move them around here, either by making them bigger or smaller by pulling on each side of them here. You can also move them around. I can also tell the engine to fill any gaps between the samples, essentially by going up here and clicking edit, auto fill gaps you'll now notice that all these files are filled. Now, granted, I was moving things around, so let me just undo that here and take it from scratch. So go back here and do the same thing again. Auto fill gaps, they'll now be evenly filled. But let me just undo this here and show you another way that I actually prefer in terms of highlighting the files. I'm gonna go back up here to edit and click auto fill full range. You see what just happened? So this doesn't only fill the gaps, but it also stretches the samples to the full range of your keyboard, both down to the bases and all the upper notes. All commercial instruments in SoundPaint are designed this way, so I personally prefer this layout since it's more intuitive and musical to me. I always think that there should be music on every single key when you play it. It just, that's what the keyboard is for. No key switches or anything. The keys are for music. Now, let's say that I don't have time to complete this project here and I just wanna save it and come back to it inside of the editor. Go up here to file, click save project as, give the project a name, We'll call it like ambient flutes and click save. And you'll notice up here that we now have a project name as well. And you can close the editor or you can continue doing whatever you want to do. But I feel this is a little bit of a long winded way of explaining everything. Let me just show you in reality how quick it is. Uh, let me just cut this entire thing here. We have a clean slate. I'm just going to open my browser here. I'm going to drag in the samples. I'm going to click up here and edit order fill full range. I'm going to go into files and click generate part. And now it's going to generate this part and put it straight into SoundPaint. That's really how quick it is. Now, SoundPaint is organized in two ways. We have commercial factory patches that are marked by this icon up here. But if you notice over here, we have our user library, and this is where your new parts are going to be stored. So I'm going to click on it here. I'm going to go into the parts browser. And now you'll notice that we have our flutes down here, our ambient flutes. Let's just listen to them. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, I love the texture of this one here. Uh, let me just click one note stretch here and click on this key again. And now I've isolated this specific sample and put it across my entire key bed here. Let me just um, add a little bit of rain delay to that one here. So beautiful. Beautiful. But let's try something totally different. Let's try to import a piece of music and then shoot that music through an instrument. So the music has to conform to the instrument. I know it sounds strange because music is normally made from instruments. In this case here, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to morph music into a piano. So let me just clean sound paint here. I'm going to go in here and load our 1928 piano in part one. I'm going to go back up here to use the samples and I'm going to take in the Hall of the Mountain King by Edward Grieg. Um, you'll listen to it here. You know the song already. But I want to take this song here and I want to morph it into the piano. So I'm going to click on the morph button here. So you can hear the cadence of the music, but it's conforming to the piano because the morph here is set to the left side, meaning that the piano is the dominant part and the other part here has to conform to the piano. Let me just associate the morph here to my controller so I can control how much I want to morph it. And uh, let me try to play something here. Isn't that cool? So the music becomes a part of the instrument. It's not that the instrument is making the music. I just think that's kind of fascinating to reverse that whole notion. But let me show you another example of what you can also do in terms of importing samples. Um, I have a song, an old demo I wrote for ADO. Um, I'll just play it for you right now so you can hear it. It's this sort of funky Caribbean style kind of demo. And all I did was to chop it up in a bunch of random parts and then use the USI tool to import it in and just have all these fragments laid over the keys here. Um, you can hear them here. So it's really random, but it's really interesting what you can do once you have all these fragments. And I made a variety of programs here that I'm just going to show you. And um, I'll put it up on Discord as well so you can play with this um, particular set of samples and these programs if you want. Um, I just think it's interesting because out of these old sort of demos and fragments, one can create entirely new music. So everything you're about to hear is coming from this single music track here. Um, there's a dozen or so programs here. Starting here with the DJ Daft Time, sort of a little bit inspired by Daft Punk, if you will. Here's another one. This is sort of more of a, like a funky groove, um, just sort of laying everything out in a sort of wave sequence. Again, just using the fragments uh, from the original demo. And for this one here, um, I actually had two different filters that in themselves are creating a little bit of rhythmic accentuations and attacks. Um, if I remove them, you're gonna hear things sound a little bit different. The 
filter is really cool sometimes. You can use it in more sort of musical ways as well. Um, this one here reminded me a little bit about Frankie Goes to Hollywood Relax in a more modern version or old maybe. The future is retro. I find it so interesting because we are listening to the same fragments here and how many ways you can make new music out from one original song. And here's another one. This one here, um, I found like this sort of little woodwind snippet and made a tiny instrument out of that, uh, more sort of soundtracky. There's also a couple of organ snippets in the demo, so you can make this old school sort of organ Hammond kind of vibe to it. Or you can do more sort of laid back, slow, sexy kind of groove. And when I make these things here, uh, let me just try to clean it up here. I'll just try to find a snippet that I like, or a couple. Let me just try here. So this one, for example, is pretty obvious. You tune it down a little bit. But it can also be about finding certain elements. and then import that into an arpeggiator or just build the grooves that way. Um, here's a oh so 90s kind of house vibe. But I personally like, um, I have a thing about like, I like to turn music down real slow. Um, I just think I hear more nuances and I can appreciate certain elements a little more. I'm a little bit slow that way. So I made some uh, soft Caribbean grooves here as well. And another one. Also took, um, there's a particular part of the song where there's just a, this brass tap and it has that perfect sort of 80s radio station kind of tune. You'll know exactly what I mean, like this. 
right? <laughs> it's just so perfect. I mean, that in itself, it's a cool groove. And I guess this is what USI is all about, like just finding that like grooving things, find your own samples, just have fun with them. Um, you don't have to do anything in particular. Um, I guess I don't have to sit and click this key. I could put it into the arpeggiator and do the same. But this is what it's all about, man. Just have fun, drag your samples in, whatever you wanna do. And I should probably also mention that now in Sound Pain, it's not just that you have the ability to import your own samples, but you can actually also save your programs and share them with others. So we're opening this up to the entire community. You guys do what you want, share, like, love, whatever you want to do. As you may know, there's also going to be a more advanced version for power users of this tool coming later in the year, where you can do more sort of elastic things like velocity morphing, legato, round robin, all that kind of stuff. But USI here is really just intended for anyone working with normal samples and not sort of hardcore instrument builders just to get their stuff in there and have fun. So hope you like it.